Welcome to the Brigham Young University Family History Library webinar series. My name is Braden Knudsen. I'll be your host for this webinar today. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us and invite you to participate in some of the polls that we have down at the bottom of the screen as we go through our announcements here at the beginning of this webinar. So our next webinar will be on Family History and GIS Part 2. That will be the title and that will be by Jerem Randall. And that webinar is on Friday, December 8th at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that's this Friday. And if you've never heard of GIS, which um, stands for Geospatial Information Systems, it's a really neat resource for family history and um, it can be a lot of fun. So if you've never heard of it, come check it out. And if you have heard of it, um, come see how you can use it more efficiently with your family history research. It'll be a really cool one. Um, and if you ever have any topics, feel free to get, send us an email at any time um, and we'll try to get those incorporated into our webinar schedules. So today we'll be pleased to hear from Catherine Grant, who will be giving a presentation titled, Giving the Gift of Family History. After years on the sidelines, Catherine started doing family history and discovered a new passion. Her specialty is mentoring new family historians and helping them find success and maybe even avoid some of the mistakes she's made. Catherine teaches Sunday classes at the BYU Family History Library. She also presents at Riverton Saturday seminars and other family history events. Her column on family history ran in the Nauvoo Times for about a year and is still available online. Catherine works for the LDS Church as a technical writer with a focus on usability and process improvement. Besides family history, she loves uplifting music, thought-provoking books, and homemade guacamole. And as we get the time turned over to Catherine and she gets things uploaded, we'd like to remind you about your um, the comments and questions box on the right-hand side of the screen. Please feel free to write in with any comments or questions, and we'll make sure that all of your questions get answered by the end of the presentation. And then, Catherine, whenever you're ready, feel free to take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Brayden. And everybody, welcome today to our webinar. We have kind of a fun topic. This webinar is being recorded a couple of weeks before Christmas. And so the topic of this webinar is... If I can get the screen to advance. There we go. Ideas for Family History Gifts. Now, of course, if you're listening to this recording and it's not Christmas time, the gifts that we're talking about here can be given any time of the year. So let's start out and look at a few gifts that we might consider to be more perhaps traditional gifts. One gift that you could give that's related to family history is a temple picture. And as you've probably noticed, if you've been in an LDS bookstore or at an LDS bookstore site, website, they have a wide variety of temple pictures. Anything from a postcard size that is maybe a couple of dollars to beautiful large pictures with mats and frames, you know, gold edged frames and so forth that could run into the hundreds of dollars. So you can find something that will fit your budget and that will be nice for the person that you want to give it to. If you're looking for something free or more of a do-it-yourself thing, LDS.org, the media library on LDS.org, has a huge selection of temple pictures that you can download and print or put on a desktop, uh, you know, for your wallpaper, whatever. I wanted to make a comment about this. As Braden mentioned, I work for the LDS Church, and part of my job responsibilities has been, has included user research. And at one point, I was asked to do some user research on some of the temple pages on LDS.org. So if you've ever seen those little surveys that pop up and ask for your opinion about a website, I was looking at feedback from those surveys. And a little to my surprise, to be honest with you, users were so grateful and so positive about temple pictures. They made comments like, looking at the temple helps me feel the spirit. When I see the temple, it helps me remember my covenants. It helps me avoid temptation. And I didn't realize how powerful a temple picture could be in somebody's life. And so if you're thinking of a gift for Christmas or any other time, a temple picture could be a wonderful, inspirational gift to give to someone. Also, books are always welcome for those who read. I've listed, or those who like to read, I should say. I've listed a few of my favorites here, but of course there's many others available from LDS booksellers. 
The top one, Hearts Turn to the Fathers, is one of my all-time favorites because it gives the history of family history since the Restoration. So it starts with Joseph Smith and the visit of Elijah and then traces family history down through the years until about 1990 when Family Search started. This is a super book for anybody who loves family history or anyone who loves history in general and just sees uh, or enjoys seeing how things evolve over time. You can find this free online. It's in PDF, but the chapters are broken up into separate chapters, so it's not quite as convenient to read online, but it can be done. If you just Google Hearts Turn to the Fathers, you'll find that. Uh, the second book I wanted to list is Refuge in Reality, The Blessings of the Temple. And if you've heard John Groberg speak or you've read any of his books, you know that he is a master storyteller and also that he has a gift for tying um, things into spiritual or, or to pointing out the spiritual meaning in things. And so I love reading his stories for that reason because they're so uplifting and I find that my testimony grows. And this one is no different. This is actually a series of experiences he shares from when he was a temple president. It's very readable. It's not technical or complex in the least. It's just very reader friendly and the kind of thing that that I think almost anybody would enjoy. Very inspirational stories. The next two, House of Glory and Temple Worship, talk about how to make our temple experience more meaningful. So they're not uh, just a series of stories, they're kind of stories and doctrine mixed together. And that's not to, to say that Brother Groberg's book doesn't in, contain doctrine, but his really is more story-based, whereas the next two, uh, House of Glory and Temple Worship, are kind of a mix. And then finally, Covenant Keepers by Sister Nelson is not a book specifically about the temple, but because it deals with covenants, the temple plays a prominent part. And this book is the one that has that contains the 21 day challenge for family history. So this is and this is a, a short book and very readable, very enjoyable. Um, any of these would make a good a good gift for anybody. OK, photo keepsakes. We have so many photos nowadays on our phones or tablets or so forth, and they can be made into wonderful family history related gifts. You can make a scrapbook, either physical or digital. You can make a collage, either physical or digital. And you can see that in, in this image that I um, got off Wikimedia Commons, this is a digital collage. So the person has taken a number of different items and kind of put them together on a screen. But I was Googling too and looking at some craft stores and you can also buy frames, physical frames that do this same type of thing. And they've got some really beautiful ones that are, are pretty reasonably priced. Online photo albums, you can make those with any photo album service. And I should mention here, I, I'm avoiding mentioning specific vendors here because this is not a commercial for any given vendor. But if you search for online photo albums or any of these items, you can most likely find something that would work for your, for your gift needs. Another thing you can do with photos is personalize different items, different physical items. So for instance, you can uh, get a series of maybe 12 or more photos to put on a calendar. You can put photos on a mug, on coasters, tiles, ornaments, Christmas ornaments, or even t-shirts. So search online for vendors if you're interested in doing that. And um, prices vary and turnaround times vary. and you can find something that will will probably meet your needs as far as that goes and it makes a unique and interesting and memorable gift. How about jewelry? If there's somebody that you know that likes would like a necklace or a tie tack, you can get jewelry at pretty much any SL, any LDS bookseller or you can just google family history jewelry or family tree jewelry and you'll come up with a lot of great options. How about a family tree chart for somebody that you love? 
FamilySearch offers four different styles of free charts. You can see those here on the screen, and if you go to this URL listed below, you can actually just print those right from the website, and it uses your the data in FamilySearch Family Tree. So if you're concerned about that data at all, you might want to check it out first before printing the chart. TreeSeek.com is another website that offers some beautiful free charts. This one also uses the data in FamilySearch Family Tree. And I've shown six examples here. As I recall, they had about nine different styles, I want to say. So if you go to their website, then you will see the different styles that they have available. And you can print them. Or any of these two, you can um, put them on a thumb drive or whatever and take them to a commercial printing place, like an office supply place, to have these charts printed. Oh, and I should mention, too, that the BYU Family History Library prints charts for a modest fee. And so if you Google BYU Family History Library, um, probably Family History Charts, that will bring up the, the information about that. If you're looking for something on the commercial end, and typically the commercial charts have more variety and probably a little higher quality, but also the cost, of course, is commensurate with that. If you're interested in that kind of chart because it makes a lovely keepsake, Google Family Tree Wall Charts and you'll find a number of commercial vendors. Or for those of you who are familiar with Cindy's list, she has a whole page of vendors for charts. So you would just go to this URL, cindyslist.com slash charts slash vendors, and you'll get a good list of vendors that you can check out for that type of gift. Some people, especially if they love family history, might be interested in some kind of subscription or membership or registration. So for example, you could give a, script, a subscription to a family history magazine, and there are a number of reputable ones there that would make a good gift. Just Google for that, search online. Genealogy sites may also, a subscription genealogy site may also be a good gift. As you probably know, the church has made a free uh, free offers available on some major sites such as Ancestry.com and Find My Past. So of course since those are free for members you wouldn't necessarily give those as a gift to a member of the church. Although if you have non-members in your family you could give that as a, a give a paid subscription as a gift. But there are, are a lot of other genealogy sites out there that are not free to anybody that um, you know the church has not made agreements with. And so one that comes to mind is newspaper archives. And there are several good sites that provide newspaper archives that you could uh, give a subscription as a gift. Also, somebody might appreciate a subscription to a genealogical society, particularly if they have ancestry from a certain area of the world because different areas will often have societies just focused on that area. And the fees are usually pretty modest. They range from maybe $30 to $80 or something like that. So Google for that if you think that somebody would be interested and find one that would meet your needs. You could also give a registration to an event like Roots Tech or BYU has a genealogy conference every summer. So to uh, pay for that for somebody to go, that would be a nice gift. What about doing somebody's personal history? Isn't this the kind of thing that often we think that we're going to get around to and we never do? It's just, it just seems like since it's not, quote, urgent, then other urgent things seem to bump it out of the way. And if you're like me, I may not be motivated to do it for myself, but if I've given it as a gift, that's more of a motivation. So you can either do your own. For instance, if you wanted to do one and give it to all your children or all your siblings for Christmas, or you might volunteer to do one for somebody else who's busy and doesn't have time to do it themselves. You can type the family history, or you could record it, do an audio recording. If you write it, if you typewrite it, you can uh, give people an electronic copy or you can make printed copies. 
And then as far as whether as far as printing it, you've got your choice of just doing it on a home printer, which is perfectly fine. Or if you wanted to go a little more higher end, you could take it to a copy or yeah, copy supply place, an office supply place, excuse me, copy shop, that kind of thing and have it bound. Or there's also some commercial printers that will make a beautiful hardbound book. And those kind of go obviously from cheapest to more expensive. So printing it at home or an electronic copy is cheaper. Whereas if you go to a, a copy place or get it commercially bound, those of course will be more expensive. Just depends on your needs and what you are wanting to give as a gift. Here are some resources for personal histories. One of the biggest questions or maybe biggest stumbling blocks is that people sit down to do their family history and then they have writer's block. It's like, oh my goodness, what, what am I going to say? Where do I even start? Well, Google questions for writing a personal history and you will get a bunch of websites that have prompts or um, ideas for what you can put in a personal history. One example of that is the 52 Stories project that FamilySearch did a while ago. I think it was maybe a year or two ago. Here's the URL. If you go to the FamilySearch blog, then slash en for English, then slash 52 Stories, you'll get pages with 52 prompts, one for every week of the year. And that will help you either write your own personal history or write one for somebody else. Gifts of service can be a really meaningful way to give somebody a gift of family history. Some families like to do um, gifts, it's gifts of service in somebody else's name. So for instance, we did that in my family one year for Christmas, and we just said to the other person what we were going to do for them. So I might say to my mom, I'm going to do five batches of indexing for you as a Christmas gift. This doesn't work for everybody. I remember one time I tried that with somebody and they were a little offended. I guess they didn't think it was a really good, a, a real gift in a, in a manner of speaking. So be sensitive to that. Give this as a gift if you feel that somebody really would appreciate it. So a batch of indexing or zoning can work. You could offer to tend somebody's children so that they could go to the temple. I mentioned that to a busy mother with toddlers and she thought that was the best idea. She said that she would so appreciate that. And I had a friend that um, somebody offered to do that for her, a different friend, and she absolutely loved it. It ended up changing her life that this friend offered to watch her kids actually on a regular basis while she went to the temple once a week. So don't underestimate that. That could be a really meaningful gift. And it's a small sacrifice, maybe watching somebody's kids for a few hours for a life-changing experience for them in the temple. You could also offer to attend the temple with somebody. I had a friend a while back who hadn't been to the temple for quite a while and wanted to go back, but she was a little nervous, you know, a little hesitant because it had been so long. So to go with her, that was that was a meaningful gift for her. And you may think of somebody in your life that um, it would be the same for them. When you give a gift of service, you may want to make a little coupon. And again, online you can Google gift coupons and find free things to print out, or you can make something really simply in your word processor. Just a very simple example here, this coupon is for, and then you print it out and maybe write the name in kind of fancy writing, or even do it with a fancy font. This is pre presented or excuse me, this is for and then list the gift that you're giving and presented to and list the person. And then in this case, I put Merry Christmas, but of course, if it's somebody's birthday, you can put the birthday or whatever. Takes about five minutes to make on a word processor. The last thing I wanted to mention is that we can give a gift of family history to our beloved Savior. You might have heard the First Presidency devotional that was given this past Sunday relative to the date that this webinar is being recorded. And Kevin Duncan gave an interesting talk where he mentioned that when he'd been a boy, he knew that Christmas was about Jesus' birthday. And he thought, how awesome is that? We're celebrating somebody else's birthday, but I get the presents. <laughs> and maybe many of us felt like that as children. But as we've grown up, it starts to feel a little strange 
that we're focusing on um, Christmas presents maybe for everybody except the person whose birthday it is. So one present that could be very meaningful this year is a gift to the Savior of making a sacrifice of your time to increase your family history involvement. This ties back to a quote that was given by President Russell M. Nelson at Roots Tech 2017. He invited us, he said, I invite you to prayerfully consider what kind of sacrifice, and preferably a sacrifice of time, you can make to do more family history and temple work this year. I think that that would be such a meaningful gift for our Savior after he paid such a, a, a tremendous price to redeem us and save us. So for us to make the atonement available to others through family history work, it just seems like that would be very meaningful to him and something that he would really appreciate. I wanted to end by sharing this quote from Wilford Woodruff. This is a quote that has impacted me greatly and has made me kind of rethink my priorities. He said, Oh, I wish many times that the veil were lifted off the face of the Latter-day Saints. I wish we could see and know the things of God as they do who are laboring for the salvation of the human family who are in the spirit world. For if this were so, this whole people with very few, if any exceptions, would lose all interest in the riches of the world, and we might even say in the distractions of the world. And instead, and instead thereof, their whole desires and labors would be directed to redeem their dead. So I just want to close with my uh, recommendation and testimony in a sense that when we give a gift of family history, we're giving something that endures eternally. The wrapping paper, the trinkets, the trends, the gadgets, they all fade away eventually, but a gift of family history will last. And that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you so much for coming. And Braden, do we have any comments or questions from participants? Not at the moment, we don't have any, but if anybody does have any other suggestions that maybe you've thought of for different gifts, feel free to write those into the comments. And if you have any questions, please write those in now. Um, We'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, we're always grateful to have you participate in our webinars with us. And we're especially grateful for Catherine and all of the hard work that she puts into these webinars to present for us. Um, if you didn't get a chance at the beginning, we have the polls down at the bottom of the screen. You can um, submit some feedback, let us know how we're doing, um, what we can do to improve our webinars, as always. Um, this webinar has been recorded, and we will post it onto our um, YouTube channel so you can come back and Get through, look through the ideas again. Um, those are always good. And be sure to follow us on our social media accounts so you can stay up to date on what's going on here at the BYU Family History Library. And we'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Thank you.